As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. There's no crying in baseball! I ate his liver with some fava beans. I skinny ate. That was totally wicked! If I can change, and you can change, everybody can change! And welcome to another episode of Your Next Favorite Movie. I'm your host, Josh G. And today we are kicking off for the third year in a row of our best month ever. And this year we're going to kick it off with Ethan. Hi! I'm always the runner-up, or like the second to last, so this is fun. We'll find out if if it's because it's the BFE that's like causing the numbers, or if I am the one that's going to tank it this year, and I'm excited. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's right. I will keep up with the numbers and give them to Ian, and he will read them aloud on the show. So we will see how that goes in the end. <laughs> so, for anyone who's tuning into this for the first time, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about Best Film Ever? Because that's what this is a collaboration between me and Best yeah. Film Ever, and we call it Best Month Ever. So, uh, Best Film Ever is a podcast that's hosted by. Uh, well, the good people that you'll hear for the rest of the month, so uh, myself, Ian, Liam, Georgia, and uh, Megan from time to time, and what we do is we're trying to find if we can like sort of come together as a consensus and find what is like a community spread best film ever, what everyone can agree on, and we've been doing this since 20, I think it was March or April 2020 that we started, and I think we're like episode 180 or 81 and uh we we've got this nice little community and we we cover a film every single week do a big deep dive and it's mainly just friends joking around and at the end of it we'll have some some analysis and then we also do things such as uh, see or skip it so we'll uh go and see a film that's out and uh if we like it we say see it if we don't like it we'll say skip it and we have a a full discussion about the the film in 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 the cinema and then what maybe other people see and what it could mean for a franchise. Uh, we, uh, oh, Georgia and Ian also do a retrospective on the best episodes of Friends as well, called um, Friends of the Podcast. Yeah. And that's a really interesting deep dive. They just interviewed actually um, the man who plays Mr. Heckles in uh, some of the episodes of Friends. So that was really interesting to to hear. But it's, it's a really fun little, uh, like, it's say a hobby, but it's becoming more than that. And it sort of helped me as well find that path for uh, the future of what I want to do as a career. So it's it, it's it's an amazing time capsule of growth as well for that. I rambled, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. And I just, uh, like you mentioned, the, the extra episodes, the 180 is just the full deep dives because total, you guys have, what, well over 300 pieces of content oh, probably? Oh, God. Lots. <laughs> I yeah. don't think so. <laughs> We've got these little media madness as well that we do, which has uh, become really fun where we get like 30, I think it's 36 is in a, in a bracket and we sort of will it down to find the best of that. So we, I think we just released an episode of Marvel movies. Before that, we did uh, rock bands and before that we did sitcoms. So it's, we get this nice little variety of things, which is always great to interact, especially with our audience as well. All right. So we're going to get into it. You brought me a movie from a director I know, but not a movie I knew. This has got to be not his first, but one of his earlier films. Today, we're going to be talking about Taika Waititi's Boy. Kia ora, my name is Boy. And welcome to my interesting world. My favourite person is Michael Jackson. He is the best singer and dancer in the world. Want to see some Michael Jackson dance moves? My favourite subjects are art... Social studies and Michael Jackson. I have a six year old brother called Rocky. He's got powers. Sorry. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Thank you, boy. I'm named after my dad. He can dance as good as Michael Jackson. He's a master carver, deep sea treasure diver, soldier, the captain of the rugby team, and he holds the record for punching out the most people with one hand. Your dad's not overseas. He's in the same cell block as my dad. Not anymore. He escaped. My dad's not here right now. He's a busy man. I'm a busy man. <laughs> when he comes home, he's taking me to see Michael Jackson. I'm taking you to see Michael Jackson. Live. The end. Yeah, it's it's fun. Whenever I bring up Taika Waititi, they're always like, the, the ones that always go is Thor, Jojo Rabbit, 
uh, What We Do in the Shadows. I think this is his second, because the first film he did was in 2007 called Eagle vs. Shark, and that's a very it's a very weird film. It's um, yes. Jermaine Clements, uh, and I can't remember the name of the actress, but yeah, this boy is uh, from 2010, and it's essentially like a love letter to 2010's New Zealand, which is really fun for, uh, no, sorry, uh, 1980s New Zealand, which came out in 2010, uh, which is great for me because I, my mum is from New Zealand, so I grew up a lot with uh, New Zealand culture and going back and forth there until I was 12. So despite never being there in 1980, all the stories my mum would tell me, I'd go, oh, I can kind of picture this or picture that. So I sit down and see the film and go, oh, this is exactly how how she described it. So it was this a really interesting like a, a picture come to life in a sense of describing this this era of of a country which I've not properly lived in but like experienced a lot in my life. Yeah, I, I, I'll say it's a universal story because as soon as I just read the synopsis and I saw Love of Michael Jackson, I was like, that was me. That was my childhood. Yeah, I was obsessed with Michael Jackson for a while. So yeah, but let's tell everybody where when did you first see this? I I think it was the last time that I came over to New Zealand. It was like 2012, because this is a really weird reason to watch a film. There was this drink driving PSA, which uh, if you type in New Zealand drink driving ghost chips, it's like this minute and a half uh, don't drink drive sketch, which was put on TV all the time, which was directed by Taika Waititi. And I like it just enthralled me. Like, it, it's this whole thing of, oh, if my mate dies during driving, I'm going to have to stay with his family and play Scrabble, or his ghost will haunt me and they'll think I'm crazy, so he just better stay here. And I talked about that a lot when I was over there, and I think it was like an uncle was like, well, this guy's also directed a film, and you might want to watch this. And I sort of just sat down with with my mom, and she was like, this is, this is like what I remember. This is so nice. And it wasn't until the second time I watched it when I was a bit older I think it was before Thor came out that I went, oh yeah, this is the same guy. This is I, I should just rewatch the rest of the filmography. So it was a, it was a it's a weird it's a weird way to get to it, but it's always fun. So for anyone, and I assume there will be plenty of people with this one, tell everybody what boy exactly is about besides just the love letter. Give a yeah. general synopsis. So, um, Boy is a film about a, a boy called Boy who lives in uh, rural New Zealand in the 1980s, and he's got a big passion for Michael Jackson and telling very grandiose stories about his dad, who's played by Taika Waititi. And he's not really known his dad uh, most of his life at the age of 10. And for some reason, his dad has magically come back and he wants to be in his life again. But maybe there's something more to that. And we delve into uh, the the themes of abandoned parents because his mum died when he was young. He lives with his auntie in a batch house and loads of kids. So it isn't really that interconnected family that you really are used to, that uh, nuclear family type thing. So now he's got, kind of getting everything he wants back. But also, is there something more to it when a child idolizes their parent maybe too much? I'm going to ask you this, and you may or may not know the answer. Is there a movie that Tyka's directed that he doesn't put himself in? Um, See, I'd say Eagle vs. Shark, because he's he's only there as a... Um, as a photo, there's a scene right. where Jermaine Clements goes and brings his girlfriend to his family, and he's like, oh, this is my brother Dave or whatever. Dave's dead, but everyone wants me to be as good as Dave, and it's a photo. I'm going to count it. But I, <laughs> yeah, I think he's been in every single film he's done. That's what I was noticing. And Nor- I guess you're right. I, I did watch Eagle vs. Shark after this, not even knowing mm. it was Taika. I just came across it, and I was like, this sounds weird. I want to see it. And it turned out to be that. But uh, yeah. I'm thinking of all his other stuff, and it's normally like significant roles, not just like cameos, like a M. Night Shyamalan would do a cameo in his own films, but mm. so I can just he gets like, roles. Yeah, he gets like I think the the least he's had, if I if I include Eagles vs. Shark is that, but like if it's not that, it's um Hunt for the Wilder People. Because he's usually the main character or side character in Hunt for the Wilder People, he gets like a scene where he gives a funny monologue which everyone goes on about for the rest of the film um 
I think that's the most like tame he's ever been, which is which is something. <laughs> okay, I have not seen Hunt for the Wilder People, so mm-hmm. yeah, I've heard of that one, but had not checked that one out. So I mean, and I knew I hadn't seen the Thor movies either, so mm-hmm. I don't. I know he's in. I know he's a character. I didn't know how big the role was though. Yeah, it's like kind of minor in the first, in like the first thought he did, and then in was it the second one's love and the, the fourth uh, is love and thunder, and he's like, "This is my story. I open it. I end it." <laughs> okay. So you kind of talked about it, but why else did why did you choose this? Because this was not that's what the choice I was expecting. I'd never heard you bring up this movie before. Um, I don't want to be like pretentious. Like, well, I like Taika Waititi before, but like part of that was that. There's more to Taika, I think, than like the Thor movies and what we do in the shadows. And what we do in the shadows is great, but I think he now his films are very like slapstick and funny, and there's humor and there's heart to them. But this is a film which I I daren't call it a comedy. It's got really funny elements, but in the sense of like just people in New Zealand say these things and they're funny out of context and even with context. This is really serious, and I don't really... The closest I've seen to him get this serious since is, like, Jojo Rabbit, and that's Jojo Rabbit, which has right. a reason to be that serious. And I like this very grounded uh, perspective, because even Hunt for the Wilder People is a very silly film, but its heart mm. is still there. But Boy tells this really interesting story, which obviously you see a lot, but I think especially... For the way that it's given this perspective, you are you are you are the ten year old boy in this situation. Like you fully get it, and even though you get a bit more dramatic irony because you may you're you're older than boy probably, and you go, oh, I know, I know what's going on. I know this is shady. You kind of get enveloped in this because I think it's really interesting to watch this now because everyone goes, oh, Taika Waititi, he's really char- charismatic, he's really funny. So you see him in this and go, oh, I just want to love him, and then you can't. And I really like this uh, perspective as well of it, because it's a film that not many people see when they see it. They can have two very different reactions, depending on where they view Taika Waititi films. And mm-hmm. most of them kind of come into the same the same point of view at the end, which is, oh, I thought he was just going to be a lovable goofball, but maybe I was wrong the whole time. And I really like that. I really like <laughs> that it's not like just black and white. There's like this kind of grey area two by the end which is really really interesting especially for an early taika film as you know we don't get into the big spoilery details on this show so now we're going to get into the fun stuff (laughs) and that would be first of all if this movie got a sequel where would you want to see i i I was thinking because it's it like it's a pretty open closed thing but i think an interesting um film plot which happens very rarely but when it does i always enjoy it which is uh absentee parent becomes the world's most devoted grandparent and obviously boy comes out in 2010 set in 1980 release boy now set in 2010 he's he's an adult you could even say he's he's not a boy he's a man and uh maybe he's got a family he's got some kids and obviously his dad probably hasn't been in his life since their last meeting so maybe uh, Taiki comes back, his dad comes back, and he's like, I want to be a grandparent, because I screwed up as a, as a parent, and I want to make up for all of this. So now we still kind of get that dramatic irony of the sense that Boy now doesn't believe him. Instead of just believing him adamantly, he doesn't believe him. But he's 100% dedicated and serious to this. And maybe now, because of that, in the in the first film, you get all these, like, crazy scenarios was like oh he got out of out of jail with a spoon and he fought them all off karate style and this time he's like yeah well let me tell you about all these awful things he's done and they're maybe like the overly dramatic but it still gets to fall into that theme and by the end of it they kind of realize i'm doing what you did but in a different scenario and we both need to accept that we're changing I think that would be fun. I think that would be nice. I like a, I like a sort of, not everything has to be happy and perfect, but I think you can still have your not like nihilistic ending, but very bittersweet where he goes, okay, fine, I'm still not forgiving you for what you've done, but maybe we can, we can see like progress. We can see you turning over a new leaf for the final time before, before it ends. So let's get into, and in a way, 
what you just did is almost would be what they call a requel these days, a Ruby mm. reboot slash sequel. <laughs> but let's say they did a straight up remake and recasted. And, and maybe you'd have a, even have a director in mind. I don't know. Where would you go with this? See, I was I was kind of struggling at first because obviously I'm like, if if I go straight from the start, you got to set it in New Zealand. And there are no there are no New Zealand actors, let alone Maori actors. And that was the big thing. So virtually my my moment, let's put it in another country. <laughs> Defeats the point, but we're gonna put it in another country because this this is more just a logistics thing because I don't know enough uh, Maori actors other than the kid who is uh, Ricky Baker in Hunt for the Wilder People, and he's now 18, so it doesn't really fall into that. So, I think, uh, just just for my own sake, I'm going to set it in England in 1980, because that makes it a bit easier. And also I get a slew of British actors that I think can fill that role. And something that I thought would be really interesting was, you can, you can still have that perspective, but obviously it's the 1980s in England, we're in a very different period. So, boy... Uh, for me, I think we also don't have that many young British actors that I can think of the top of my head. I just watched Matilda, uh, the mm -hmm. film, and solely for that, because I can't think of any other kid actors, I'm gonna go with the little girl who played Matilda in the Matilda musical that movie that came out last year because she was really, really good, and. I seem to have like a little uh, niche of every time I come on here, I, I gender swap some of the cast. <laughs> so, so boy is now girl, just for my own logistical sake. Um, and then uh, for for the dad, for Taika Waititi's character, I was going over this, and there's a there's an actor called Lee Mack uh, in the UK. He's this comedy actor, and for the last like fifteen years, he's done a show called Not Going Out, and the whole thing is he is. He's an absolute doofus. Like his whole thing is that he's silly and goofy and gets into all of these different scenarios. But when he's serious, oh man, he is serious. And I think you could easily have Lee Mack. If you look at a photo of him, you go, oh yeah, that's it. That's a guy who could easily play a deadbeat dad who's just who just got unlucky in his life. And I think you can easily have that happen with him because he's got this really interesting uh, mix of seriousness and like sadness in his humor and then for the auntie because the auntie is also a very important character i feel uh i'm just gonna go to catherine tate because catherine tate can just play a real pissed off person who who also is just protective i've been rewatching doctor who and she's great in that and she just she gets serious comedy uh in a way that like many British stand-ups don't as much so I'm, I'm going i'm going for that that's that's my trio there that is that's my little trio, and then we're gonna set it in like Birmingham or something because that that feels that feels fun. Not gonna lie, I don't know most of those people, but that's that's <laughs> what it takes. Because when Boy came out, no one knew most of these people. You know, that's a, yeah, at least over here, kid... in, over here in the states, I should specify over here in yeah. the states. <laughs> the kid that played Boy, like I watched the film, and I go, oh, I know Rachel House because she's been in other Taika Waititi things, and she's now in the uh, in like the US and uh, she's in the Thor films, and like. The only other sort of Maori actor I, I, I saw in my brain was Tamora Morrison, and that man is 65. And I went, okay, may, maybe not. But uh, the kid that plays Boy, he's been on like one other film, and it came mm. out in 2019. So like that that's sort of like the area that we go for now with um like the limited <laughs> actors that I can use. Yeah, I guess so. All right, so let's do this. Let's have you give that one final pitch on why they should take a chance on this. There's a high chance that you've seen New Zealand in films or you go, oh, it's the Lord of the Rings play. So that's the goofy, funny thing. And I think this is like a bit of an eye-opener film in a sense to people who don't know anything about New Zealand go, oh, it's the funny people who go, oh, there is some heart and seriousness to this that I, I don't know because obviously I'm a bit, not sheltered, but how would I know about this little island uh, in the 1980s? So I think there's an interesting perspective there, as well as in seeing some of the more uh, interesting elements of the culture. There is a song which plays throughout the entire film called Poye, and it is my favorite song of all time. And it, the um, it's an embracing of a Maori culture that is not really used as much or seen in film anymore or media because, you know, 
it's a small island and uh, like Maori Samoan people aren't prominent as much. So I think there's a really interesting dissection of what it's like to be a Maori person in an island, which is slowly no longer becoming yours and adapting to modern times. And to see that from an outsider's perspective, if, even if you know nothing about New Zealand, it's really interesting to see that, um, that tech modernized. Uh, especially just also the music you get to experience a whole load of new music from an island that you probably haven't heard before outside of maybe crowded house <laughs> very true very true <laughs> and the end the ending credit scene is one of the most fun uplifting things i've seen i second all that i watched this a few weeks ago for the first time and yeah i had a good time with it so mm. this was an enjoyable one so just like last year when you brought me Chef, I was like, oh, that was a nice watch. And now you brought me another good one. So, all right, Ethan, I think that's going to wrap this one up. Why don't you tell everybody where they can find you and the podcast, the online stuff, all the stuff you can remember anyway. Yeah. So if you've liked more of my voice and as the weeks progress, you'll probably like the more of uh, everyone else's. You can listen to us at the Best Film Ever podcast, which is on Apple, uh, Spotify. I said iTunes anyway, but... Uh, anywhere where there is a podcast that you could listen to there uh we're on twitter at best film ever pod uh where we do a lot of our interactions with the fans i'm on twitter for the podcast at bfe underscore ethan i'm on letterbox as bfe underscore ethan uh where i watch a awful amount of star wars and keep talking about it but uh there's all that we have a patreon where we get to have like little little hangouts and we talk on twitter uh, in a little group chat to everyone so if you like what we what uh i've brought what everyone else has brought and if you listen to an episode we have that way and you get to control the episode as well in different ways and it's uh it's a really fun community that we've created so if you like all these little ramblings and deep dives into uh whatever we we do long form. We do a lot of long form. It comes to like two and a half to three hours to sometimes four, but it's because we're having fun. So it's it's always a good it's good to be listening into the conversation, even if you might be screaming going, That's not what that thing is, or I know this thing, which is the best part of podcasts. But um yeah, that that's that is best from ever in a nutshell. So if you've enjoyed any of this, please please listen, because it's always it's always fun to have a new listener and and friend of the podcast. And just to piggyback off what Ethan said, if you hear something, you're like, that's not what it is. Put it out on Twitter. They will call, they will call themselves out on it. They call it the yellow button moment. They will call themselves out and admit they made a mistake <laughs> and give you credit for it. So do it. Yeah. Let them know. They like that. That's the kind of interaction you get with the, this group. So oh, it's always fun. It is. It is. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at YNF Movie Pod. I have some other accounts that I'm really not active on, so just go there. That's the easiest one. And if you listen to this in a podcast player, go ahead and hit that subscribe so you don't miss. Because next week we continue Best Month Ever. Ian will be joining the show, and unfortunately, no one else is giving me their picks yet, so I don't know what he's covering. No. <laughs> Ian will be get, coming on next week. Until then, we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>